One thing we talk about often here on the channel is authenticity. People today are starved for authenticity. There is so much propaganda in the media. So many things are fake in society while being presented as real that when you find someone authentic, it's actually refreshing. It almost seems rare. I grew up during the height of the gangster rap era. I was in my preteen years during the beef between Death Row Records and Bad Boy Records, which turned into a media-driven beef between the East and West Coast. Now, the centerpiece of this controversy between Coast was Tupac Shakur. Before he was signed to Death Row Records, Tupac was already a multi-platinum rapper and a successful actor. Prior to signing with Death Row, his music was meant to... It was meant to uplift people, or it was highlighting problems, highlighting the struggles people went through growing up in a ghetto neighborhood. Singles like Brenda's Got a Baby, a song about a 12-year-old girl who became pregnant by her own cousin. She tried to dispose of the unwanted baby in a trash can. Now, at the time, back then, there were no services offered by the WNBA dump to ensure the baby would be found and kept safe. Then you had other songs like So Many Tears, Keep Your Head Up, and arguably the best song that Tupac ever wrote, Dear Mama, an autobiographical song about Tupac's relationship with his own mother, a song just about anybody can relate to. If you have any kind of positive relationship with your own mother, I doubt you can make it through that song without tearing up. But you get the point. From 1991 to 1995, Tupac's music was authentic. He finds himself in prison with the only record label willing to put up the one or maybe two million dollars to bail him out being Death Row Records. All of a sudden, Tupac's image completely changed. He started promoting thug life, nonstop shit talk about being from the West Side. West Side till we die. Yeah, which is exactly what happened. Tupac was claiming California when he was born and raised in New York City, the same city he was supposedly going to war with. It was all an illusion. It was all for publicity, a ploy to sell records. Tupac Shakur was not a thug. He was a fucking poet. Yes, he grew up in poverty, but he went to the Baltimore School for the Arts with Jada Pinkett Smith. Doesn't sound very gangster to me. Outside of Suge Knight, the majority of artists signed to Death Row Records they were not true to the image they were portraying. They weren't keeping it real, as they like to say. Dr. Dre was no gangster. Snoop Dogg, he grew up in Long Beach in the 70s and 80s at a time when the city was 90% white. I've been to Long Beach, California. It ain't the hood. Thug life was a fantasy. It was an illusion. And it was an illusion that cost Tupac Shakur his life. I hope the same doesn't end up happening to Ja Morant. Now, just to be clear, Ja Morant, he hasn't traveled far enough down that road just yet, but he damn sure seems to be on that path. Recently, Ja Morant appears to be living a double life. Every night on an NBA court, he plays the part of a superstar NBA player. Once the game ends, he plays the role of the family man, the loving father. Ja Morant has a young daughter who has become almost like the unofficial mascot of the Memphis Grizzlies. Once the game ends, Ja Morant heads straight to the courtside seats where his daughter is sitting with his father. He puts her on his shoulders, running around the court with her, showing her off to the crowd. Now his daughter, she was also included in his Nike ad promoting his signature shoe. Ja Morant, he is well-spoken. He's a smart kid. He's very likable. On the surface, he's exactly what the NBA needs right now. This league is in desperate need of a relatable superstar player. LeBron James at the end of his career. Steph Curry has ruined his appeal by being baptized and born again, becoming a full-time partner tag-teaming the woke wiener. Zion Williamson can't stay healthy. Jason Tatum in Boston, just he's just not interesting enough, doesn't have the charisma. Giannis, Luka Doncic, they will never be the face of the NBA. Trey Young, he doesn't win consistently enough. The list goes on and on. But the NBA has a possible savior in Ja Morant. The problem is Ja Morant is fucking everything up. There have been times this season where I have criticized Adam Silver in the NBA front office for not fully getting behind Ja Morant. I didn't understand 
why the league was intent on promoting LeBron James and Steph Curry over their young rising stars like Zion Williamson and John Morant. Now, perhaps Adam Silver was privy to information that the rest of us didn't have at the time, because now I understand completely why the NBA is hesitant to get behind John Morant. Over the last week or so, we have been given a glimpse into the off-the-court lifestyle of John Morant. Some of this glimpse was given to us by John Morant himself. Back in January, he was reportedly sued for allegedly punching a teenager multiple times during a pickup basketball game. This week, it was reported that John Morant also threatened the kid with a gun. He supposedly runs with this posse of homies off the court, this posse of friends. I would imagine his crew is similar to the friends who surrounded Allen Iverson and Michael Vick early in their careers. <laughs> Why don't you ask them how well that worked out? Allen Iverson never reached his full potential in the NBA. If it wasn't for... I believe it was either an uncle or maybe a former coach who stepped in and saved Allen Iverson. If it wasn't for them stepping in and putting a large portion of his money in a trust that he couldn't access until he was like 55 or so years old, Allen Iverson would be broke today. How did running with the homies turn out for Michael Vick? Ah, you know, wasn't all that bad. He just spent a couple of years in federal prison and pretty much ruined his career in the NFL. Cost Michael Vick hundreds of millions of dollars. My question is, where was Ja Morant's posse when this altercation with a kid took place? Real friends would step in and stop you from being stupid. If this confrontation happened with an adult, real friends would step in and handle it for you. You don't allow the cash cow to get into a fight. He has too much to lose. If you're his real friend and you're living off the bank account of Ja Morant, you handled the bullshit for him. So where were his friends? I know where they were four days before this altercation with a teenager took place. They were at the mall in Memphis threatening the security guards. Ooh, that's real gangster. How tough you guys must be to threaten mall cops. What the hell is John Morant doing in a mall in the first place? I didn't know malls still existed in 2023. Earlier this season, the Grizzlies were taking on the Indiana Pacers. After the game, I would assume John Morant was playing the preferred role of the genuine family man. What was his entourage doing? <sighs> they were once again fucking with security guards. You know, because that's what real gangsters do. From a distance, they were pointing one of those red laser light beams at security guards and staff members of the Indiana Pacers. Now, if you don't know what's going on in that situation and you suddenly have a red dot on your chest, you rightfully assume someone's pointing a gun at you. All this insanity surrounding Ja Morant, most of which involves firearms, it has been highlighted by the mainstream media this week. Now, you would think, you would think, Ja Morant would be cognizant of this. You would think this would be the time to practice good judgment. I mean, you want good judgment all the time, but when you're being scrutinized for being a fake gangster, Probably a good idea to clean your image. John Morant has endorsement deals worth hundreds of millions of dollars throughout his career. This kid's got everything to lose. Yet for some reason, this right here is how he chose to celebrate a three-pointer the same day all these gun stories were making headlines in the mainstream media. Watch for yourself. <laughs> he you, 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 is, is he Brandon Clark? Like, he's like the whole... Just in case I'm not allowed to play that clip, John Morant celebrated by pointing a finger gun. Stupid! It's just stupid! But it gets even worse. My God, does it get even worse. Last night, John Morant partying at a nightclub, which is fine, I guess. When I was 23 years old, I was doing the same thing. Thankfully, when I was 23, I didn't have the ability to get on Instagram Live and show off my stupidity to the world. John Morant and his so-called friends, his posse, they were having a good time drinking, dancing with women. John Morant decides it would be a good idea to share his night with the world on Instagram. Now again, 
a real friend would step in here and say, you know, probably not a good idea. You're being criticized for being a fake gangster. You are being scrutinized for glorifying guns. Probably a good idea right now to lay low. But if you're not going to lay low, at least try to keep a low profile. The last thing you want to do is something stupid like this. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know... When Allen Iverson and Michael Vick were destroying their careers, you could at least have some level of sympathy for them. Both AI and Michael Vick, they're from Newport News, Virginia. They are both from the real hood. They grew up around real gangsters. I would imagine some of their family members were making their living in the streets. Allen Iverson and Michael Vick, they were not pretenders. They weren't pretending to be something they weren't. They were two dudes from the hood who were given millions of dollars in their early 20s. What did you expect to happen? It shouldn't have been surprising when Michael Vick ended up in prison. Money does not change who you are. Money magnifies who you are. But it's different with Ja Morant. This dude grew up in the suburbs. He went to a private school. Comes from a two-parent home. His father, a former teammate of Ray Allen. Ja Morant is not a gangster. Ja Morant is pretending to be gangster. The question is, why? We've seen how this movie ends before. These major corporations, they don't do business with gangsters. You think Jay-Z goes to business meetings draped in gold chains, gold grill, and a backwards hat? No. Ja Morant is portraying an image of himself that's not real. And I don't understand why this image seems to be glorified. John Morant should be the poster child of success. He should be the image of what happens when you're raised in a good home, when you have two parents who care. Instead, he wants to portray an image of being a fake gangster. He's looking for street cred. Yeah, good luck with that. You can have credit in the streets or you can have credit in the bank. Can't have both. You might be able to maintain both for a little while, but eventually it will catch up to you. John Morant has a promising career. If he can get the hell out of his own way. I have seen a lot of people criticizing T. Morant, John Morant's dad, claiming that he should step in and handle this. I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine he's already tried. When you were 23 years old, did you take advice from your dad? The only person who can save Ja Morant is Ja Morant. I just hope he realizes it before it's too late. But give me your thoughts. Ja Morant, pretend gangster, on the path to possibly destroying his career in the NBA. Hadn't destroyed it yet, but this current image he's portraying, it's not sustainable. At, at least it's not in my opinion. What do you think? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.